rounding and truncating. When we've got an answer that's got a lot of decimal places or numbers after the decimal point, we often don't want all that detail and we need to be able to know how to round or truncate. Now truncating is just chopping off the decimal. So cut off all di digits after the decimal. Now that might be useful um, sometimes in tax situations if we're calculating GST. A business can just ignore all the cents and just calculate on dollars. So you just cut it off. So if I was truncating 24.891, I'd just cut off all of those and write 24. It's truncated. Sometimes it makes more sense to round up to the nearest whole number. Now remember that we might also call a whole number an integer. And so if I rounded this up, I was at 24.8. Up to the nearest whole number means I just go up one. 24 become 0.891 becomes 25. So rounding up, go up to the next whole number. And rounding down is actually just like truncating because if we're rounding it down to the nearest whole number, well, that's just 24. That makes sense, I think, because rounding up we're already past 24, we've got to go to 25, but rounding down just takes us back down to 24. So round it up, this would be 25, and round it down, 24. Now often when we round, we'll actually talk about not rounding up or rounding down, but rounding to the nearest whole number. And then we'd have to decide between rounding up and rounding down, which one's closest to the original number. And we'll talk about how to do that later. So there's a difference between if they tell you to round up, or if they tell you to round down, or if they tell you to the nearest. If you round to the nearest, you've got to decide. Sometimes it's really important that you round up. And often this is in practical situations. Um, so if I measured a piece of timber that I needed to finish a table and I discovered that it was 21.8 centimeters long that I needed, if I had to go to the nearest center, if I have to go to a centimeter, I'm never going to round down because my piece of timber will be too short and it won't work. Too long, I can cut that back, but too short, I need a whole new piece of timber. So often in practical situations, You go a bit over, not a bit under. So sometimes it's just important to round up. And in practical situations, that's likely to be the case. You don't want to be going back to the shop because you rounded down and you got too little. Better to get a bit more. Sometimes we need to round to the nearest five cents. None of you are old enough to remember when Australia had one and two cent pieces. But we used to. Now our smallest currency is the five cent piece, which means if you're paying in cash, they can't charge you $23.58 because you can't pay eight cents. So to the nearest five cents, if it was $23.50, no worries. If it was $23.51, the closest five cents would be, well, that's 23.50. So what often we would like to ask ourselves is, well, which one? 
If I went to 2350, oops, sorry, not 2350, 2355 is one down from that, or 2360, just decide which one's nearer. 2358, that's three cents away. 2360, that's two cents away. So it's closer to $23.60. So $23.60 is charged in cash. So work out where your two different five cent options are and see which one is closer. And sorry for messing up there. Now, as I said, sometimes they'll want us to round to the nearest whole number. And a number line is actually pretty helpful to think of this. I'm going from 21 to 22, and there's all the decimals in between. And I could have squeezed decimals in here as well, but it would have got too crowded. The rule is that we change where we're going when our first decimal place is at five or more. And you can see why. Because if our first decimal is one or even you know, zero, it's on, on top of it, or one or two or three or four, it's closer to the lower number. So we round down and just stick with 21 in this case. If our first decimal we cut off is five or six or seven or eight or nine, it's closer to the number one up from there, and so we round up. So the rule is first decimal digit less than five, so one, zero, one, two, three, or four. We just truncate, whoops. Truncate, we round down. Because remember, rounding down and truncating was the same. So if I had 21.4 and I wanted the nearest whole number, I'd just say, well, it's a four there, it's closer to 21, I'm rounding down, it's 21. We're just truncating. If the first decimal digit is five or more, so this includes the five, we round up. So that's our rule for how to round to the nearest whole number. Later on, we'll talk about rounding to one or two or three decimal places, and it's actually a similar rule. It's this less than five or five or more. So rounding these to the nearest whole, 21.3. My first decimal digit is three. There it is. It's less than five, so I truncate. This is 21 to the nearest whole number. 31.586, the only one we need to worry about is the first one, because I'm rounding to the nearest whole number. Look at the first one. It's five or more, so I round up to the next whole number after this, which is 32. 56.8 kilograms, I look at the point 8, that's 5 or more, I'll round up to 57, and because I'm in kilograms, I'll say kilograms. So that's an introduction to rounding to the nearest integer, or rounding up or down to the next biggest or lowest integer, or whole number.